To fully understand rendering in Next.js, it helps to know about the evolution of React's rendering over the past decade. So in this video and over the next few, let's understand how React has evolved its rendering strategies. If you have been in the development game for a while, you'll remember React being the go-to library for creating single-page applications. In a typical single-page application, when a client makes a request, the server sends a single HTML page to the browser. This HTML page often contains just a simple div tag and a reference to a JavaScript file. Here's an example of the HTML file from Create React App, a tool used to scaffold React apps back in the day. We have an empty div tag and a reference to bundle.js. This JavaScript file contains everything your application needs to run, including the React library itself and your application code. It is downloaded when the HTML file is parsed. The downloaded JavaScript code then generates the HTML on your computer and inserts it into the DOM under the root div element, and you see the user interface in the browser. This process is evident when you see the HTML appear in the DOM inspector, but not in the view source option, which shows the HTML file sent by the server to the browser. This method of rendering where the component code is transformed into a user interface directly within the browser is known as client-side rendering. Client-side rendering became the standard for single-page applications with widespread adoption. However, it wasn't long before developers began noticing some inherent drawbacks to this approach. First, generating HTML that mainly contains a single div tag is not optimal for SEO as it provides little content for search engines to index. Large bundle size and a waterfall of network requests for API responses from deeply nested components may result in meaningful content not being rendered fast enough for a crawler to index it. Second, Having the browser handle all the work, such as fetching data, computing the UI, and making the HTML interactive can slow things down. Users might see a blank screen or a loading spinner while the page loads. This issue tends to worsen over time as each new feature added to the application increases the size of the JavaScript bundle, prolonging the wait time for users to see the UI. This delay is particularly noticeable for users with slow internet connections. Client-side rendering laid the groundwork for the interactive web applications we're used to today, but to enhance SEO and performance, developers started looking for better solutions. Join me in the next video where we will explore the second rendering technique and understand how it addresses the limitations of client-side rendering.